Okay, so it was put into the transaction fee algorithm. So the way stable coins work, uh, especially like algorithmic stable coins, is that they usually hold actual stable coin. These are the best stable coins, by the way, the ones that actually hold other stable coins. Um, but I don't see the point in, you know, having a stable coin if all you're going to do is use other stable coins to, you know, maintain the value of your cryptocurrency. The way that true stable coins work is that, you know, they're, te they're, they're usually attached to a, an exchange. So USDC is attached to Coinbase and then USDT, I think, is KuCoin. So you're saying that it was um, basically it was basically embedded within the code, then, correct? Yeah. So there was the a, exchange. Yeah. So what they did is they exploited a specific part of the uh, transaction fee algorithm. So for whatever reason, so every single cryptocurrency has, you know, so most of them have something that they're importing from a specific repository. You know, those are always good. There's different things built into the fee structure. So sometimes it's fixed and sometimes it's flexible. And sometimes there are uh, functions. So sometimes there are functions that are public only owner. And then there are uh, you know plenty of uh, public functions that are not only owner. So if they somehow uh, figured out a way to accidentally you know, make a hole in their security that was like these uh, cryptocurrencies should be private only owner so that people can't even see it or access it unless they're the owner. Certain ones. Some things you want to be displayed uh, when you go to go to buy the, the scan site. So whether it's like a Ether Etherscan, uh, BSC scan, or Tron scan or, you know, Polygon, I forget what their scan is, but when it comes down to it, the, especially this mint function, you know, that definitely has to be only owner public because you access it from a particular website. So like if we go, you can actually look through their code and maybe see exactly what the, where the exploit came from. But there may also be, you know, something in, in one of these two articles that actually says exactly in the free structure, how they took it. So they took like a, you know, two hundred and two thousand dollars with the USDC. So the biggest problem with it is that they stole the liquidity. And and whenever there's this much taken out or moved, when there's very, very little liquidity, it really bears a big problem in general because there's massive price movement. So Many, many cryptocurrencies have ridiculously low liquidity. And no matter how much people have invested, they don't have like an automatic uh, liquidity mechanism. So to me, a cryptocurrency is of very little value if no liquidity is available. You know, they had nearly a quarter billion in market cap. And the price crashed because of some, because of a withdrawal of less than you know one percent it was like a tenth of a percent of the overall market cap crashed the price of it because the liquidity was so low so i mean that's just ridiculous so you know a lot of times in cryptocurrency land uh, are inside jobs but this particular one it it makes absolutely no sense for this to be a particularly inside job and now safe dollar has halted everything and there's still like a bunch of money there's still like you know you got to think about it like the 2.425 billion dollars that was in there is essentially worth zero right now because they allowed the fee structure to pay out potentially a random address. So we can actually go ahead and look at Safe Dollar uh, on the Matic blockchain. So we just look up Matic uh, blockchain explorer. And it is Polygon Scan. So if we paste that name in here, um, we, we should see, so a lot of these algorithmic stable coins, uh, which is what these things are called, 
they have shares which ex which uh, help them to maintain the stability of the price. And one of the biggest problems actually trying to look for these things by the name is that so many scammers and complete thieves will copy the name of a cryptocurrencies with their ticker and write another and and it'll look to the average investor as if it was that exact coin but if you look at the transactions you'll see most of the time these scam coins you can't sell them at all so let's just try this one we see that there was about 70,000 transfers and the price right now is close to zero. It's never going to be exactly zero because, you know, at a certain point, people are going to be like, well, why should I take out, you know, the hundred dollars that I threw in there when it's worth absolutely nothing right now? Uh, maybe they're going to recover. People just are like, whatever, the hundred dollars lost is, it, you know, the transaction fees actually sometimes exceed the value of what you would extract. Uh, it's sad, but I've seen it happen a lot of times with things after I sold them. Uh, if we look at the quantity, like how much was actually going through there. So this is still being like transacted or it was still being transacted up until about an hour and a half ago. And 18 minutes ago, this is, a, this is literally called a dead address because there's no way that uh, cryptography would ever produce such an address based off of a private key and a mnemonic. You know, private key is the uh, alpha numeric uh, key that protects all of your information. And the mnemonic is that 12 words that you use to set up your MetaMask account. From the 12 words, the mnemonic is how the private key gets created through cryptography. And it's impossible for people to know what either one is from either, but they do have the keys to your to your wallet if they get either. So as long as those are safe, then you're good. Now, if we start reading the contract, we can start to understand. So actually, yeah, pressing read contract, all you're going to see is what the current uh, liquidity rates are. You know, you're going to be able to basically read what information that's being outputted from the contract. So this is how to get a quick idea of what's going on with a contract without having to really understand solidity language. So the dollar oracle, like this is basically the, what is telling it what price to be. So an oracle, as I may have said before, if some of you recall, uh, there are price oracles that they were using years ago, and that's why they particularly chose the word oracle. But, you know, an oracle is just a contract that tells a smart contract on the blockchain specific information and can also relay information from the blockchain um, outside of the blockchain environment which is uh, actually extremely secure. And so, uh, you know, it's its own environment. And for years, they were not really transacting much other than prices with these oracles. So some of these things like don't really mean much unless you actually read the code, like get dollar price. So this actually tells you how much the price of the uh, SDO is. And then, you know, it's saying one, you know, but who knows? So that's like the target price. This is called a pegged price. So they're unable to peg things if their assets aren't there, which pegged them before. Um, excluded from fee. So that's like an address that they can put in there that would be excluded from the transfer fee. Um, It, oh, so there's probably an output and an input. So excluded from fee. Um, and th that probably means um, going in. And then the two figures means going out. But it's hard to tell what people's grammar perspective is sometimes. Um, jackpot fund. So they had like a lottery going to keep the price up. Uh, it's a very common theme in cryptocurrencies. Uh, that are, you know, don't have any um, uh, monotheistic um, concept of 
preserving what the profits taught us. Uh, the liquidity fund, that's the address where they w were supposed to uh, be sending, you know, enough liquidity. Now, you know, 250,000 liquidity, that's good for the average investor. But if you have somebody who's trying to buy $50,000 worth of that cryptocurrency, uh, you know, they're going to move the price by like 10% or something with, with the purchase of $50,000 worth of that cryptocurrency. So, you know, I see a liquidity address, but I don't see a liquidity fee. So it, sees, it says total liquidity added. Uh, what it really means is how much liquidity is available right now. I'm done. This shows you how much of the cryptocurrency we I mean, burn. And then when you went up, I went down. Basically, um, okay. So I'm going to show you another contract. Let's look. Let's look at, the, at uh, Safe um, Safe Moon because that's like a really popular coin that utilizes uh, liquidity allocation in its uh, algorithm. So I don't really like, I mean, it's a very sloppy, it seems like a sloppy uh, coin and very complicated uh, as well. So whenever you're trying to do something complicated, like make a stable coin, it's extremely difficult to get releases on time. So they probably had um, like a loophole. Let's actually look, so you have to click on this contract button um, to see what the contract actually says so you can like read the code um and you know i you know so this is like not ancient you know it's solidity 6.2 but uh and, and but now they have you know solidity 7 and solidity 8 you know so most of the older um solidity codes you really have to uh think about as being vulnerable just in general that's why right now i have the current one at 7.6 when um just because of this conversation i'm going to do whatever we have to do to get it to 8.6 uh, uh, and 9 is actually about to come out so I just you guys know what the compiler looks like. I have another question before you move forward. Mm -hmm. So is the new platform based on Ethereum or is it going to be based on uh, Ethereum 2.0? So uh, Ethereum 2.0 is a concept that of staking. So uh, staking versus uh, farming. No, you actually can you actually can stake in farms and farm your stake, uh, which is way more profitable than regular staking. Uh, but that's but that actually is not what you do when you're staking uh, to support Ethereum 2.0. So uh, it's staking versus mining. And it's also proof of stake versus proof of work. So they have videos um, on this and it, you know, it, it's crushing the miner industry for those who are mining Ethereum and making boatloads of money. Uh, it's like, it's over for those who were, uh, and if you look, these are mostly older videos, like even a month ago, people were still making profit with their Ethereum miners, but that's exactly when they should have sold because now miners are making like half, if not less. Um, I can actually show you real time what miners are making and more about mining, but that's completely besides the point.